Brand new build series, Kinetics, beautiful 48 scale FA18D. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so start a little bit backwards with this one. We're not going to start with the cockpit tub and follow through the instructions in order. We're going to start kind of on the back end of the instructions and stop the ordnance. And the reason for that is I've got a few things in order for the cockpit tub, which haven't arrived yet. So I've got some redoc figures, pilot figures, which are no big deal. They're going at the very end. And, um, but more importantly, Red Fox 3D printed instrument panels. Now, Without getting the cockpit tub done, I can't do any main assembly or anything like that. So hence, I want to get started with something. So the bench is clear. So I'm going to start with the ordnance. And it's not a bad thing because get that stuff out of the way first. You have to worry about it later on. You just all you have to do is glue it on once it's things painted. So on top of those two two things as mentioned, I've got a Flying 11X um, canopy mask set. Because this is the only one you can get. Now... Not overly excited. I've used these guys before and they're not fit. I think I used them maybe on the Persian cap. I've used them on the AH1Z helicopter I had. They didn't really fit there either. Um, various different mask sets, um, different stuff. I've had bad luck with these guys, but we'll see. We'll try them again. Um, not that this is a pretty complicated panopy to mask. It's pretty straightforward in the Hornet. It's not like we're doing a, I don't know, like a German World War II bomber or something where there's frames all over the place. So that's what we got going on. If we go for the box real quick, the, um, we're obviously going to do it in the Bengal Tiger markings, and um, this is a decal sheet. So it's all decals. Now, if you wanted to, you could get a mask set and paint these, but I think the decals will look fine. Just... It's got a giant sheet there, and we've got the mask set. And if I hold the box up here, you can see what's going on. We've got the top fuse large. We've got, actually, let's do this. You know, we got a fair selection of plastic in here. I'm going to go for it all right now. We don't necessarily need to. We do have some photo extra too, which is nice. Um, a few little parts here and there. I'm not sure if you really can see exactly what's on going on here. But, um, yeah. And, but, yeah, like I can say, nice kit. Built these before, um, but not indeed, but different versions. So I'm going to put this to the side and pull out the instructions and... Again, we're not going to spend too much time here going through all the instructions. Um, we're just going to do what pertains to what we're doing today, which is ordnance. So, first of all, what I'll do, go, we'll do is go back and you can see the color call outs are all in MIG, which kind of um, is a lot unhelpful, but at least they have Tamir and some other colors here going on. And they do actually name what color is as well. So, you know, you know blacks and whites and yellows and stuff is pretty easy for to figure out. The color call outs and your markings, you've got several options. Um, I don't know why you buy this kit if you didn't do this option right here, because these are plain user markings and then got the beautiful um, Bengal Tigers from Japan 2009. That fits perfectly because my Redo figures are from that same era too. So you have to be very careful. They have a lot of figures on Redo, but they're all different like masks and different time periods. And you have to kind of figure out what you're getting for the right time period. I had a real hard time getting them to maximize my shipping. I ordered some other stuff as well. And I wanted a couple of 30 second figures for my um, F14D Tomcat. And again, trying to get a couple of figures that line that time period for like Tomcat, it was really tricky to kind of figure and get the right configurations, that kind of stuff. So, nevertheless, um, we're doing a 2009 version right here. This guy with all the beautiful stripes on it. Because, as you know, I'm kind of sick of doing light ghost gray and everything. I like to kind of switch it up. And I've done all kinds you see behind me of interesting schemes the past year or two. So, um, here's basically instructions of how they put the stores together. Um, not really much to talk about. It looks like the... Um, the Amram's or one piece and uh, two piece the rest of the stuff. Now, moving on, you can see the store's layout and this was a challenge. So I, I Googled a lot of Google images and looked to see what's going on here. And basically a lot of the pictures of this aircraft or this squadron, they're kind of, um, Pictures that they have any, nothing on them. They're like empty, no, no, no missiles or anything. So I did find a few pictures and I kind of tweaked and figured out, did some Googling and some Wikipedia, some parts and stuff that included. And what I've come up with is this little plan here. Um, it's kind of skewed because they're not actually aligned up with the, with the, um, the pylons. But basically, the usual sideline is on the wingtips. Um, we're going to have moving inwards from out to in. 
we're going to use the um, AMRAMs because I've seen a couple of pictures with them holding those. So we're going to do the AIM 120s, um, probably the C's on you know, the two outer pylons, two inner pylons. We're going to have fuel tanks. Um, the two kind of py side pylons on the side of the fuselage, leaving them blank because per my reference material, they're not really carrying anything on those. And then in the very, very middle, um, we're going to go with the um, AAQ28 pod. This guy right here. Um, so it's AAQ pod in the middle, a couple of AMRAMs, a couple of sidewinders, a couple of fuel tanks. And that it brought, kind of rounds it all up pretty much. So that being said, I'm going to go ahead and start clipping some stuff with the sprues, getting the pieces together, and I will be right back. Okay, so off to a not great start. So the sprues were a little flashy. Um, on this part with the with the missiles and stuff. So I built them up, which I'll show you in a minute. Instructions a little vague as well. Um, and it, this is where it stops. It doesn't show you how to attach them to the aircraft, which is pretty straightforward, I guess. Obviously, you know, but it, it doesn't show you how like the pods fit on or anything like that, or what the center pylons are. It doesn't specify that. So a lot of kind of guesswork here. Also, um, this guy was a terrible fit. There's no holes to put this in. Um, I don't want to go on the pod, but let's go through this real quick. So here's my little box of parts keeping together. So the pod itself, it still needs a little bit of a sand, but you see I had to, had to fill all the way down the sides here. There's massive gaps at the back, um, and it's just, it's really, there's no, there's nowhere, to, see it's all stuck in my fingers, that tip still. Um, there's nowhere, it was just really weird. It's like nowhere to, nowhere to put it. So I looked at pictures online and figured out where it went. Um, yeah, it was just a weird one, this. And it, it, the holes don't match any of the pylon holes. Because if it's a center pylon, which I'm going to put it on, the spacing is, is way off. So that's a weird one. So there's going to be some, you know, some, I don't know, cutting some stuff off and just super gluing it on, I guess, at the very end, unless I'm missing something in the instructions. But I went through... Um, I didn't see much there. So that's that guy. needs a little bit of sanding there to fix up. Fuel tanks. You can see I filled all the way down. I still need to fill this area here, I think. Um, maybe we'll prime it and see. But um, the problem with these guys, they had pins to kind of put locating pins. But they were right next. They had like a... So the sprue gates are right next to it. So when you cut off the sprue, there's no way to kind of really get in and sand it very well without cutting that pin off. Um, but nevertheless, we got them together. We got just tipped some putty around the side and sanded the back. Um, Usual wet sanding works better for me. So I just took a sponge, sanding sponge in the sink, some water, and just sanded it back. Um, but you see there's, it's hard to tell if, if that's going to be um, visible or not. I guess we'll see once we prime it. So those guys are done. And nothing to notice, they have three holes on top. But all the pylons obviously have two attachment points, which fit. So it's kind of weird how they, how they have that extra hole. Um, I'm not sure whether maybe they're making these for a different kit with different size pylons or something. I don't know. But anyway, it does fit, will fit fine, all that kind of stuff. It just there's an extra hole for some reason. There's no point filling it because you're not going to see it once the um, the pylon's on. Um, these guys were no problem at all. It's just adding that part right here. Again, a little flashy. And the AMRAMs. Sidewinders need a bunch of pieces on here. Had stuck to it, but and the fins, um, and other parts again. This was a flashy part here, um, but nonetheless, we got them together. And um, what else? That's really it. I mean, so it's just a lot of um, I'm just being overcritical because I just built a Tamar F35, and compared to you know, plastic, it's not quite up to scratch compared to that. Like I said, a little flashy, and the and but nonetheless, we you know, a little filler, we're getting it together, no problem at all. So, I think, um, oh, dropping it, I think I'm a little concerned still about the front here. But um, but let me know. Let me get in a primer and see how it looks, and we can just do some resanding then if we need to. Um, I did rescribe some of the lines real quick as well, um, while we just puttied over. But that's kind of where we're at. So I think next step is really get these in primer, and then kind of go from there. All right. So I've got all these guys primed up. So usual for these with the uh, mist surface of fifteen hundred black, and then once that dried with the white, just spraying on, kind of you know. Set our panels, just kind of give it a shadow coat to um, put down our um, Light Ghost Grey. So next up will be Light Ghost Grey 308. This is Lacquer, Mr. Hobby. This is my favorite, Tami LP34, I think it is. A little bit too blue for my liking. Um, so that's these guys. And the missiles. I actually find that Mr. Servicer 1500 Grey, or Grey Mr. Servicer, 
it's actually a really good color for this um, right shade of gray so I'm just going to just use the primer color and the tips of the sidewinders are done in in gunmetal which is LP19 and then just usual white just for the tips of the um, the amrams here so that's what we got going on the four missiles got all this going on I know it's a little bit well maybe not um, so anyway so we've got that so maybe yeah just needs a little sanding here um, a little bit raised putty or something going on there um, so sand it back and I'm just going to paint all these the light ghost gray the pod I think is going to be a different color I just need to look up we can look it up real quick it's going to be it doesn't say any instructions so that's interesting so I need to look at some reference shots I'm sure assuming, assuming it's just going to be light ghost gray like the rest of the um well the back is mig 209 is light gray mm, that doesn't really help very much okay so that's light goes gray okay so i'll do a little checking on that one but the rest of it will get painted up no problem at all and um, these guys are essentially done the, the fins need to be painted um which we'll talk about in a little bit and um yeah so let me take care of this and i'll be right back okay so a lot of mess a lot of stuff going on here but i need to catch up to speed before i move on so painted all these up no problem at all and the light ghost gray we're using is 308 Mr. Hobby. So all the pylons are painted up. The painted the heads of um, these guys white, as you remember, painted uh, Mr. Surfer 1500 de gray. Um, it's a good color. So I just painted the heads of these white. I painted the heads of the sidewinders right here. Gunmetal which is go for my colors on here, LP19. And what I'll do is, as I mentioned, I did this on my F35 build series, if you've seen that one. Um, I found the easiest way to paint the, the fins is with a square brush, a straight brush, and then a little paint, and then you can get a straight line and pull it back. And it's a lot easier than with a pointy brush. Um, something I just really kind of picked up recently. So they need to be painted um, gunmetal also. I'll probably use um, Model X. It's nicer to paint than um, hand paint with this guy. Um, fuel tanks. Well, no, let's let's talk about the, um, the the lantern pod. So that, look at my reference shots, is a darker gray. So I went with the old, old good old-fashioned XF24. Just a dark gray. And happy kind of how that's turned out. Again, all this stuff needs decals and washes and that kind of thing. Um, and finally, the fuel tanks. And I went to a little bit of town to this, a um, couple of reasons. Well, firstly, I'm still waiting on my parts to the cockpit, so I'm in no big rush to move this build forward. And I've done this for a while, so I went back to the old, what I was doing, used to do, but kind of weathering these tanks up a little bit more. So it was a pain to get the seam out, um, still a bit of a center seam. I did, you know, sanded and, and filled and a couple of times, and at that point I kind of gave up. Um, but it's good as how I want it to be, and you can see it's some tonal differences in color. And that's just created by, if you remember last time I had a photo etch, um, one of these modeling things, um, the photo etch. Now, well, I actually got this for Christmas 2021 um, and never used it. So I finally got, got, got used to it. So the flexible, AK flexible, so it's a vinyl. And this is great because it just wraps right around what you want to paint. And you can spray it and it leaves, you know, some weathering or modeling, whatever you want to do. So first of all, came with XF19, a light gray. Just kind of, you know, break it all up a little bit. Then very little of um, red brown. I don't have the acrylic, so I use LP57. And this you just go very lightly. So lightly at the front and back. And then I did it all over, kind of wrapped this around and sprayed it very lightly, very little paint. And it's still not too heavy. It's still a little bit like a cheetah kind of pattern. So I came back with more of the, um, the original color, the light goes gray, and just misses it over it. And it gave it, made it kind of blended it more in, and it blended it in better and made, um, a much better look because so that's one and the other guy is over here now problem time is when you look at a box art or even on the picture here we have tigers tiger stripes on the fuel tanks now if you look at the instructions you've got this scheme you've got bengals to go on this game no fuel tanks so i was like huh 
I've got this big sheet of tiger markings, no idea what to use. So I emailed Lucky Lucky Model, I emailed um, Kinetic, and um, on their email on their website, and I got a response back within a couple hours. So real cool. So that, it does give me a lot of confidence with Kinetic. If you have any problems with your kit, like part issues, that kind of broken parts, they did respond back really quickly. And the guy basically told me um, pretty straight that hey, you know, we didn't have enough space on the decal sheet, so we didn't produce them. So we only produced Bengals only, but not Tiger Stripes. So that's kind of a bummer um, to hear that. But he, I, I give him credit. He did respond right back to me, and he also um, you know, asked me about the F-60 he just built, if I wanted to um, buy that and build that one, um, which I responded, hey, I already have the um, the Tamiya, but if you want to send it to me, sure, I'll review it. But anyway, um, so we don't have the Tiger markings for the fuel tanks, which is a bummer. Like I said, it was out of space on the paper, and they didn't do it. So, huh? So I don't. I don't think I'm gonna recreate the, um, you know, re recreate and try to paint, you know, match it all up with the tiger markings and stuff. It's gonna to be too tricky. I've got nothing to work from. Um, no plans or anything. So, especially on a curved surface. So I'm probably just gonna go with just the Bengals markings and do it plain gray and just weather these up a little bit more, maybe. Um, so yeah, bummer. So if you're doing this one again, just make note you don't have the tiger markings for the fuel tanks. And um, there you go. Also, they give a link in this to get um, better pick, like a color callouts in color. Um, somewhere in the instructions, and that link doesn't exist. Um, I tried it. Whatever, give a link in here somewhere in the instructions. Hey, if you want more reference pictures, whatever, go to this link. And that just didn't work for me. Um, I got like a 404 error. Um, but nonetheless, that's kind of where we have to stay to play. Still plenty of work to do. I'm going to go ahead and get, get these fins painted on what I need to do on the missiles, um, get everything. Then we're going to need everything decaled, and then we kind of add weathering, and we'll kind of get this going a little bit more. So that's my update. I'll be back very shortly and kind of finish this off. Okay, so all done. So a few little things here. You can see I've attached them to the pylons. So put the decals on and came back with a wash, dark dirt wash. One of these guys wiped it all off. Um, maybe I didn't let the, actually before I did that, I put a flat coat down and maybe I didn't let it dry quite so much because it kind of got, didn't come off so well, kind of give it a weird effect. But anyway, did that and just put some neat oils on. Um, you've seen me do it a million times before. I'll talk about it in more detail when we get to the weathering stage um, on this build series. But basically taking appetite long neat oils, Starship filth color, and um, just putting a few little dots around some of these lines and with a brush, just blending it in, um, creating some streaks and that kind of stuff. Some Dark yellow I used as well for some kind of like oil, kind of like you know, hydraulic kind of stains, that kind of stuff. Not that that would necessarily be on a fuel tank, just add some color variation. So two fuel tanks done, all beaten up, looking pretty good. And also add a little bit, you know, the oils to the pylons, certain areas, just again, pick out some areas. Got these guys on, which are mm, not really sticking that great, but um, the AMRAMs on the pylons, there's no real place to put these. It's a little bit ambiguous where they put them. I just kind of try my best. Um, they're probably going to fall off, but um, we'll tackle these when we put the pilots on later on. But decals all on. Now, I didn't have any decals um, in this kit for the pilot, for the um, missiles, and I think maybe I'm missing them. Um, I don't remember seeing them when I got the kit. So, importance of having good spares and keeping all your old decals. I went through my drawer and found some for my F-22 48 scale. So, use those decals on here. For two AMRAMs, one there, one here. You see it's not really sticking very well at all to the missile. Um, we need to figure something out with that. Um, but anyway, these two guys. And down here we've got the sidewinders as well. Um, in the end, on the sidewinders for the fins and for, for the, this guy, I masked up, um, I think I used, I think this is two mil masking tape. And I just ran it down the inside uh, between the fins, sprayed it. Um, so matte black for the um, these guys and the same gun metal. Or the sidewinders and these will obviously go on the wing at the very end or the wing tips and that really completes what we got going on today so we got two fuel tanks two amrams two sidewinders and obviously attack the pylons um and that's out of the way so the first thing we're going to build we've got got some of the um, more monotonous kind of stuff out of the way um, i'll put these into my little container here so i don't lose them and the very end once the aircraft's finished we'll super glue all these onto the wings and stuff um but yeah there we go it's your one that's done Thank you for watching. I'll be back next week with another part. In the meantime, have a great week, and I'll see you next week. Goodbye.